Sources tell CNN that he was told early on to avoid the topic altogether. And for now, it appears that he's actually heeding that advice. CNN's Caitlin Collins is live at the White House. CNN's MJ Lee is joining us live from New York. Caitlin, the president might be silent here, but Team Trump is pushing back against the stormy story. What are you hearing from the White House? They certainly are pushing back, and the president is certainly not being silent in private here. Brianna, he's been complaining about what he says is the wall-to-wall -wall coverage on cable news. His friend Chris Ruddy, who spoke with him over the weekend, says that he believes it's just a hoax that's meant to damage him politically. And the Washington Post has noted that he said that Stormy Daniels is not his type. So some familiar defenses there we've seen from the president, especially the hoax comment, which he's obviously used multiple times to bat down the Russia investigation. But this is certainly something that has been on the president's mind and he has been keeping tabs on how this coverage of the allegations made by Stormy Daniels have been playing out in the press but he hasn't responded publicly which though he's been advised to do so and so far it seems as if he's heeded that advice the question now that even his advisors and allies are asking is just how long he will continue to hold back because as you uh, have noticed we've seen the first lady before say that this is a president who often punches back when he's first punched so this is what uh, not following in line with that narrative and what they are waiting to see if the president does respond to these allegations. And Brianna, it's almost hard to see how he doesn't with Stormy Daniels going on television, one of his favorite mediums, as we know he's watched 60 Minutes before in the past, and also with her lawyer making several appearances on news, essentially taunting the president. So now the question is, when is the president going to publicly respond to these allegations? And MJ, tell us about this defamation suit that Stormy Daniels is filing against Michael Cohen. Well, Brianna, this is an interesting new development in the Stormy Daniels lawsuit. She initially filed this earlier this month against President Trump uh, because she wanted to get out of this NDA that she signed in 2016 so that she could speak out freely about her alleged affair with him in 2006. Well, now that lawsuit has been uh, amended and expanded to include Michael Cohen, Donald Trump's personal lawyer. Now, he, of course, has been a key figure in all of this because he was the one who arranged this NDA and also made the $130,000 payment, uh, payment to Stormy Daniels in 2016 to keep her silent. Now, what she is alleging now is that Michael Cohen has defamed her by basically suggesting that she has been lying about her affair with Donald Trump. Uh, here's Michael Avenatti, Stormy Daniels' lawyer, discussing all of this last night on our air. Namely, he made some statements earlier this year uh, whereby he basically said that the affair never happened uh, in not so many words and uh, made my client out to be a liar. So we're going to test the veracity of his statements against those of my client. Now, you'll also remember that in the 60 Minutes interview on Sunday, uh, Stormy Daniels said that there was an incident in 2011 in Las Vegas where a man approached her in a parking lot and basically threatened her about this alleged affair. Well, Michael Avenatti saying that uh, since this 60 Minutes interview aired on Sunday, he now has several new leads on where that threat could have come from. He says it wasn't directly from Michael Cohen or Keith Schiller, Donald Trump's bodyguard. Uh, but, you know, the question is going to be, will Will he at some point uh, be able to produce evidence that shows that these threats came from people close to President Trump? Brianna? Meantime, Caitlin, there's some other news coming out of the White House that the president is still talking to his former aide, Rob Porter, who left the White House after both his first wife and his second wife said that they uh, had been emotionally and physically abused by him. Tell us about that. Yeah, the New York Times is reporting that the president has stayed in touch with Porter despite that very nasty departure here from the White House after those allegations of physical abuse and pictures first surface a very botched departure by uh, some accounts here in the White House, especially on behalf of the chief of staff, John Kelly, because as you'll recall, he stayed around for several days before he actually had left the White House after those allegations first surfaced. And now we're learning that the president has stayed in touch with him, seeking his counsel on some questions about how things are going in the West Wing and also has even
even floated the idea of having Porter return to the West Wing. Now, I should offer a word of caution there that is incredibly unlikely to happen, especially because of those allegations that were made against Porter, which prohibited him from being able to obtain a permanent security clearance, which obviously was required for that kind of job, a job handling uh, the level of paperwork that Rob Porter did. But it does go to show who the president keeps in touch with despite how they leave this White House, what circumstances they leave the White House under. And Rob Porter seems to be one of the people that the president has decided to keep in his orbit here, Brianna. All right, Caitlin Collins and MJ Lee, thank you so much to both of you. Joining me now to talk more about this, Elena Plott is the uh, a staff writer with The Atlantic. We also have Michael Moore. He's a former U.S. attorney for the Middle District of Georgia and Republican strategist and former communications director for Ted Cruz, Alice Stewart, with us from New York. Elena, when when you think of how the president is not responding publicly to the Stormy Daniels saga, it's just astounding because it seems like he always responds to things. Absolutely, and I think it's one of the first instances when scandal has embroiled embroiled this administration, aides, top aides are telling the president not to speak publicly about it, not to, you know, go on a late night or early morning tweet storm, and he's actually listening. Um, what that means, I'm not sure anybody knows the implications yet, but I, th I can tell you as a Hill reporter that it's something that congressmen are very happy that he's staying silent on. Do they, can, do they believe, do members of Congress believe that he can stick to it in general? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Definitely. But um, right now, it's something, it's another thing they don't have to mm -hmm, answer for. Right. As you know, going into midterms, they want the message to be all about tax reform. And as few questions as they can get about Stormy Daniels, the better. That's right, because you have the midterms, Alice, and, and you look at a new CNN poll. It asks Americans, who do you believe? Do you believe the women or do you believe the president? And nearly two thirds say they believe the women. 21% of Americans said they believe the president. With that in mind, uh, how do you see this playing out in the midterms? It, a lot of it depends on where we are with regard to the economy. Those numbers are, are quite telling. I, I think we all can agree that anyone with common sense, based on the president's history, uh, believes these women. And in addition to those numbers, more than half the people polled in our CNN poll say that these women should be free to talk. Given all of this, his approval numbers are higher than they've been in many, uh, many, many months. And the reason for that is people knew this when he ran for office. People knew this uh, when they decided to vote for him. And this is nothing that they didn't already know. But people are not really, while it's titillating to hear about the porn stars, people are concerned about their pocketbooks. And while the economy is going well and while the tax cuts are benefiting uh, Republicans and Democrats across this country, that's why people continue to have faith and support in this presidency and have approval for the, for the job that he's doing. They, they may hear uh, all of this talk about the porn stars and the Playboy Playmates, but the, what really resonates with them is what is in their bank account, their jobs, and their, a steady economy. That's why they continue to support him. We've seen these clips of the lawyers fighting. You don't even have to leave the You don't have to go to Bravo. You can just watch the news and get your reality show fix. It's almost unreal. But their, their rhetoric really has escalated. And uh, the, the lawyer for Michael Cohen said, once the facts settle out of court, Cohen will absolutely annihilate this guy. Now, that side not known for understatement for sure. But where do you see this whole drama heading? You know, it seems to me that uh, the Trump team and the Cohen team are stepping into every trap that Stormy Daniels' lawyers may be setting in the case. Uh, they get them to respond to things they shouldn't respond to. They get them to come uh, say things off the cuff with a, a certain amount of hyperbole that's going to get them into trouble at the end of the day. I think they've set their expectations probably too high or they're setting them too high. With that in mind, I mean, when you look at how these two lawyers are behaving, this right. back and forth that we've seen uh, repeatedly now, do you who's serving their client well? And who isn't? Well, I mean, Stormy Daniels' lawyer has gotten the case out there, and, and he's able to sort of plant some media bombs that the, the Trump team seems to be stepping on time and time again. Uh, I don't think the Trump team's helping themselves at all. I mean, it's interesting to me that they have finally gotten their client to be quiet. Uh, there and, and 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 maybe that tells us something about the allegations too. You remember he was very critical uh, of, of Al Franken uh, for not saying anything, but yet he justified his support for Roy Moore for saying, "Well, I didn't do it. It's not true." Well, we hadn't heard Trump deny these allegations because it's not 
I mean, as you say, members of Congress welcome that they don't have to talk about this, but it's not like this isn't out there. It's just the president isn't out there talking about but it. You know who else isn't talking about it, Brianna? Or Democrats. Um, I was talking with a Democratic congressman this morning asking how he thought this would play out for his side in midterms, and he said he didn't think it would play at all. He said people knew what they were getting with Trump when they elected him. He also said that Democrats don't feel comfortable wading into this issue, that they would much rather keep the focus on Russia and Mueller's investigation investigation, which I thought was an interesting fact. They didn't feel like they had the grounds, really, to wade into this debate. If it's not going to play at all, that is music to Alice Stewart's ears. <laughs> Alice, thank you so much. Elena, Thanks, thank Brianna. you. Michael, really appreciate it. And coming up, Russia now vowing retaliation after the United States and a growing list of allies expel Russian officials from their borders. We'll have details ahead. Plus, breaking moments ago, the Louisiana Attorney General has decided that two white police officers involved in the shooting death of an African, uh, African American man, Alton Sterling, will not be charged. The family outraged what they're saying about the decision ahead.